Hello and welcome Fun. to another episode of the Electric Innovation. I'm Mats and this is Robert. Hello. When I was leaving uh, Vedbik, what do I say? Vedbik, some sort of. Vedbik. Vedbik. I knew it was something to do with fire, but. Um, uh, and it's been a very quiet few days as we may cover it yesterday. Uh, I was meant to do a few more things, write articles and stuff. I didn't manage to, re to finish reading a book though. That's nice. Um, we're going to the ferry to Helsingfors. From Helsingfors. Isn't that Helsingfors? Helsingfors? Damn, if we were going to Helsingfors, it's a very long process. Uh, what else is it it's the same thing. No, uh, I think Fosch is in Finland. Oh uh, yeah, whatever. It's all Helsing something. It's the same thing. But the ferry is going from Helsing. Helsing, yes. Yes, exactly. So I got that right. I got something right. Uh, Travelling through Sweden, car estimates that we need two supercharger stops to get to Nubi shopping center. And uh, we're now at 47%. So we basically lost more or less nothing. The car has been standing still now for three days, I think. This is risky business. You think chocolate in the white interior? <laughs> like I said, I estimates two charge stops. One short and one a lot. Well, the one for 140 minutes and one on 30. Personally, I estimate we should manage with one charge job and a quick topper. But we'll see. in Sweden it's very easy to notice because the roads are or the road surfaces are a lot coarser so there's a lot more noise um, <clears throat> we're actually close to Engelholm and that's where Königsegg are made so maybe we will just swing by there or maybe not we will see um, but there's a lot of traffic now because uh, I think 80% of the ferry was over <laughs> going this way um, God, the roads in Sweden are even noisier than at home, I think. Um, what was I supposed to say? Yes, we're at 32% and the car estimates arrival at Melibistan uh, supercharger with 14%. Uh, 34 minutes drive. Yeah, the uh, ferry was uneventful. The ferry itself is very good, the company and its policy for those with disabilities are crap, so do something else, just don't take the ferry, drive around or fly or whatever, I don't really care. Um, food was good though on the ferry, I had a little salad there. It was not as dry and boring as I thought. Other than that, there's not much much report. Do you have anything to say? No. No. I knew the ferry was eventful. Well, une uneventful. <sighs> Just a 20 minutes crossing between Denmark and Sweden. So.
Yeah. Now we're at the uh, Königsegg uh, Automotive, near, uh, where they have their factory and stuff. Uh, this is Engelholm uh, Air Force Base. It was an Air Force Base until now it's just, as you can see, it's a recreational area and there's, there's a flight museum here and everything. Uh, this is the reason for the... It's a, this is big, it's a lot bigger than I thought. <coughs> this is the reason for the, um, the gold stairs. That's the symbol of the old Air Force wing that used to be stationed there. And when they bought it, when Koenigsegg bought the properties, they, uh, the pilots told them about this and asked them if they wanted to use it as kind of a, um, what do you call it, symbol or the history as a way of remembering what once was here. Oh, yeah. And I think that's beautiful of them to do. Before Koenigsegg moved here, they had a barn somewhere else, I don't remember where. But that burned down in 06 or 07 and back then Koenigsegg was a lot smaller than it is now and all the prototypes and everything went went in that fire so there was a moment of absolute crisis you can imagine such a tiny manufacturer and everything you have every drawing every every claim of everything is gone but they they bought this property a while after that and and, and here you have your own test track your own flight um, you know, you have you can come here with a private jet if you want. So it's beautifully situated in the countryside here. It really is. So now we're gonna keep on driving. Are you satisfied? Yeah, I'm happy. I wish I could be in there, but that's you can do it. They do have tours, but it's expensive and I don't have it planned. This was just a spur of the moment thing. But maybe one day we will go and see. I I love that company because it's like Tesla, <clears throat> it's engineering driven. If if they want to do something and it doesn't exist, they just produce it themselves. So that means that they make things that are lighter, faster, more efficient and better than anything you can buy on the market. And I love that kind of thinking. It really is new thinking. That's fantastic. But this area, it's really nice. No. Oh. <laughs> Imagine if Rig uh, military base one day became kind of a hair, a park. Because that's huge too. And all the streets here are called are named after after all the Saab airplanes like the Viggen and the Draken and the Tunnan and all of that stuff. That's fun. Are you happy? Yeah. It's good. Happy <laughs> duck. We're doing, this is a V3, so we're getting 166 now. That's not bad at all. <laughs> so it's better than 47 that we got that uh, Melbys run. Yeah, we went from Melbys run, stayed there for <laughs> 10 minutes or something. Five minutes. Uh, it felt like 10, maybe it was five. Then we left, then we found it onwards to, uh, we don't go back now. Yeah, we stopped at Falkenberg for, Falkenberg for literally three minutes. Uh, we just need a very little top up because the computer uh, estimated zero percent of the arrival and it's a lot of traffic today. I think in all of Sweden and parts of Norway are traveling at the same time at the same place. So yeah, we just got. We, I need some food, and you need food. So we're gonna eat and we're gonna just get to Norway. I think that's just it's just said that 
Doctor Who. What, what is its estimate now if we run? Um, let's just say, let's see. This is almost home. <laughs> <laughs> We're, if we zoom a little bit, you see that's where we're going, and then you have. Well, it's not that far, but yeah. Uh, uh, 40 minutes, it says. But let's say after that. I want to see the entire thing. This is a new supercharger, by the way. Yeah, it's a V3. I probably mentioned that already, didn't I? Yeah, we can just go straight there. It's, uh, but the supercharger opened in 22nd of April this year, so it's a uh, few months. Yeah, okay. It's a, full, it's a lot of stalls here. How big is this place? Uh, 12... 12. 20. 20 stalls. Two of them are... are the, are not uh, but out of function. But look at the price. That's cheap. That's not bad. Because we have to subtract something to get the Norwegian price. Yeah, where is the Swedish, Swedish corner now? Is it above or uh, 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 we uh, neck neck. Yeah. <laughs> the, that's the nice thing about being in Sweden. It's not as expensive as Denmark because the uh, the the uh, the um, currency uh, is. Roughly the same. So now we're gonna get some food because this car charges like a bus. So by the time we're done, and we're probably gonna be queuing in the station, by the time we're done, we have to run, run off again. So here we are then, in Sweden, like a stone's throw from the border, which is absurd, <laughs> but it's nice to be here, I haven't been here in any... March last year, actually. I came down here to stay, they shut everything down, and then I was just about to have a few things, and then just thought uh, everything was full, so I turned back uh, and went over the border again. And that's the last time I was here. And uh, yeah. <laughs> no, we, we explained to you why we did this. It's a nice place, this. I've seen the hotel, motel actually. And I've eaten there once. They have a cafe. And uh, it's okay. It's nice. It has what you need. Um, it's not the worst place we have in. No, 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 no. We've used, I've tried to calculate this. We came with, to Sweden with around 40 percent roughly and we had one charge to 92 percent and we had a few quick top-ups because of, you've seen the traffic and the amount of people everywhere so i think one and a half battery and we're at 14 percent now we could actually we could have gone straight home and we ended up at home with 
around 4%, which is okay because I have home charging and there's a huge bottom buffer of this car. So I'm not worried about that at all. Um, and now we've done 253 kilometers. Let's see the picture here. Since last charge, I was still have 14% left. So it does 300 in a, in a charge. We know that, and we have verified that several times actually in on, in motorway speeds, and that's good. Today we uh, had some uh, headwind though. Mm. Yeah, that's why we had the high consumption. Yeah, because we had some. We did the la the last half an hour or so going here. We did that on the old motorway, which has lower speed limit, so we just really cruised around, taking it easy. But the headwind. Uh, I'm still pleased with the car. We can argue that, okay, an old Ionic does the same thing and it goes as far and all that. Yeah, but an old Ionic doesn't give you 250 horses and it doesn't have the world's best supercharger network and it doesn't have the world's best software. No. And then I love the love there, like, by all means, it is the best used car out there. And it doesn't have the same luggage. But no, no, and or uh, the fit and finish, especially now with the new new, the new Teslas, they become really good at this thing, properly good. I see some people complain on the fit and finish of the S, yes, but the existing S's, I mean existing before the plan came out, wasn't very good. They were, it's been the same for 10 years. The new ones though, they, they seem to be proper, properly on top. It's like saying, you know, saying leaf is bad because the old leaf is Bad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But the new leaf is good. Well, Better. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, that's how it is. I'm uh, still a little. Uh, I just spent around three thousand kilometers this vacation. Yeah, a bit under, but yeah. And I. I really, really think this is... Do you feel you did the right thing selling the old car and, and not spend the money on a long range but instead on a standard range? Do yeah, you feel and you it... it up with the uh, enhanced autopilot and throw some money on some stuff and stuff. Yes. Do you, find, do you think you did the right choice? Yes, I, I, I don't miss... I know the other one is a lot, lot, a lot quicker, and you have the four wheel drive, but 300 kilometers on the motorway and 400 kilometers on country roads. I mean, I that's okay because if I stop and this car charges as quickly as it does, I don't need any more than that. I don't think very many people do. We went almost from Bergen to Christmas and without charging. We did, so, and, it, and even then we had another 50 kilometers to go, roughly. So we could run 400 kilometers in one yeah, lap. We could uh, no, almost get, it, get to Christmas. And... Yeah, but, uh, so, so... And the fit, the finish and quality of these cars have become really good now, because it's more complete, it's more quiet, it's refined. Uh, the sound, when you close the doors, they don't sound typical American used to be very, you know, um, tinny. Now they sound, sound more like a vault, more thud, solid. Mm. Uh, and all these little things. Uh, and the total efficiency of it is just... Uh, okay, fine, you're still beaten by a five-year-old Ionic, but that's the only thing, that can, nothing else can touch this car. So I, 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 I don't miss the power, it, it, if anything, the slightly smoother power delivery actually gives the, more f gives the feeling of being a little bit more refined because it doesn't try to kill you all the time. No. Um, and I feel the new car is, has been better on phantom braking and stuff because last year when we were on vacation I was so tired of all the phantom braking and... It didn't have a break very often, but you notice every time it does. We don't notice that <laughs> three times in uh, 200 kilometers you think it's often, but it isn't really isolated. It's very, but yes, it is better on that. But that's, that, that's software improvement, mm. not the car. Um, 
So yeah. I am pleased with it. I think I did the right thing. I'm going to actually ask Call Tesla tomorrow and ask where my money is because <laughs> I traded in the old car and I still haven't seen the money from that. So there's a month since I asked them last time. And now I think I can be a little bit more direct and I will be. Let's see what they have to say. Uh, the trip here, how was that, you think? Except the terrible, terrible behavior of the guy on the, the ferry from uh, Denmark to Sweden. If it had been because of that we had been in Vedbeck mm -hmm. and we're going north, I would probably take the bridge. Mm -hmm. But since we were in Vedbeck and, and the quickest way was that way. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but yeah, we managed, it. We, we had, I had space. Okay. And I could take the stairs. It was, it was a little exercise, so... Um, I can't... They, they seemed stressed. It was one minute till they were, go, were supposed to go. Yeah, but it doesn't need to become a butthole because of it. No, no. But well, I think the car got, did well, considering that the first stop we had... Uh, at... Uh, Monk, not Monkel... Monk, Melbison. Melbison was kind of... It was just intensely crowded. And when a supercharger gets crowded, everything gets slowed down. So you don't have any, na the flow goes down, at least on the V2s. Mm -hmm. I know that's a very rare occasion, but it does happen. 47 but, kilowatts. Yeah, that's like, that's like, yeah, seriously. But we just jumped and stayed there for five minutes and jumped to the next. That worked fine. We went to the next one and there it was. Well, we could have probably get a decent speed. Yeah, yeah, because it wasn't crowded. The supercharger but, was crowded. But, but the place was... It was full of other people. So, you know... It, Everywhere. Yeah. There were three places to eat. There was Mox, McDonald's and the gas station. And everywhere. Mm. It was... People everywhere. There were cars everywhere. There was... It was complete chaos. Complete chaos. <laughs> it was just complete. And I thought it would be better at Falkenberg after they opened the V3 and Ionity. Uh, at Weirberg, mm. but Weirberg was... Decent. There was almost no one there. It was so, like if seven cars went over at Weirberg and then we left, it was like three. It was no one. And, and that's a V3 as well, so I mean, you, this car charges so incredibly quick. Yeah. I mean, people say, you need a, you need 800 volt and you need an Ionic 5. And, no, you don't need, because what we charge at 20 minutes or 30 minutes is more or less I irrelevant as quick as far as when you're traveling you stop as it fills what you need in that stop that's and, 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 and i mean you give this car 20 minutes and i have what 80 percent and i'm basically if, if you're on the three charge or you're ready to go before you get to the gas station and that's new or it's today it's incredible how quick this thing charges so and now we have gotten two new v3 Stations down the E6 in yeah. Sweden, the, the one both over. sides of Gothenburg, right? Uh, yeah, in fact, yes, one in uh, right before you come to Udvala and the one in Weidbeck. Mm. And then I also think you have some um, before you get to Malmö, I'm not quite sure, but I think <laughs> so. Well, shall we enjoy the last, the last, the last <laughs> evening of the vacation? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not being home at least. Yep, uh, we will sum, um, we'll sum up tomorrow when you get home. Yeah, I will sum up the sleep, the the sleeping accommodations and so on. Yeah. Uh, so that's it for now, I think. Comment, subscribe, like, um, share, share it. You know all that. Stay, take care out there and stay safe. Bye. Bye.